What up, world? It's your boy Kid. Y'all already know what it is, man. On our way to Mississippi. Make sure y'all subscribe to my channel, man. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, at Kid Loso, K D D L O S O. Bless me. Anyway, anyway, like I said, we headed to Mississippi right now, man. My mother's birthday tomorrow, so we're going to spend time with her during this whole quarantine thing. Gonna go to Grove Side. Yes, sir. We're on the road, leaving ATL. Pray we have safe travels. was only to give people who are tuned in with me, don't know me, following me, you know what I'm saying, to the fans, let them know background, how I started and where I am in my life now, how I got to where I am, why I did music, why I chose to do this, you know, things of that nature. If you haven't gotten any of my mixtapes, they're all on Spin Rilla, hosted by DJ October. Salute to him. And you can get them on YouTube as well. True Story, Rolling Stone, Family Matters. My single birthday twerk is on all major platforms. Go get the single, yo. Turned up with that mug. All the way live. This is that DJ I told you. You did both those voices. Yo. So, Reggie, listen, there are no rules 
So, let's see. How I got off into rap. I've been doing. I've been like rapping since I was like a child. I really love poetry. As a kid, I love to write. Stories, poems, poetry. So I've been rapping like since I was a child. I used to freestyle with my cousins a lot. We boxed and everything as a child. And entertainment is it's just something that my folks instilled in me. I used to always impersonate Michael Jackson. So like talent shows, I kill him, I crush him in talent shows just by like impersonating Michael Jackson dancing a lot. So just as far as like entertaining, that's always been in me. And shout out to Mrs. Alexander Boyd. That's where I really started getting off to like public speaking, being in front of people, you know what I'm saying? As far as like showcasing like my talent, not just like dancing, but how to speak in public, how to present yourself into like large crowds, you know what I'm saying? And not be shy and just present as far as visual presentations on projects and everything. At a young age, Miss Doris Alexander, big up to her. My mother and them always just stared at me to do things. They always put me on program to speak or, or do things. So I started as a child doing it like that. And then it just, you know what I'm saying, just grew into me. Like it just came natural. I, I speak in public, be in front of a bunch of people performing, doing whatever it is. That's how this entertaining thing was instilled in me. As far as rapping, I ain't get on a microphone until 18, a summer year of going to college. That summer I was with my homeboys and all. Um, we were just wilding out that summer, getting ready to go, you know what I'm saying? Everybody going different ways, going to school and everything. And all. Um, Victor Black had a mic studio, had a studio in his room, had a studio in his room down there in Vegas. And I asked Victor because if it wasn't for him, you know what I'm saying, I never would have got the chance to experience on how to be on a microphone, you know what I'm saying, on how to record. I learned to ride through him, so big up to him, and he ain't charged me a dime to record with him. Him, you know, Ace Black, John Black, and I have to give them credit, you know what I'm saying? And make the salute to them, because they didn't have to do that for me. They gave me the opportunity to get on the mic, record, you know what I'm saying? And actually learn, you know what I'm saying? From them. Just that experience, and like I said, they ain't charged me a film. They could have charged me to record. You know what I'm saying? They do all that, but they never did. So they actually, you know what I'm saying, taught me something. So that's a blessing for them. Shout out to Miss Blackson because, you know what I'm saying, she ain't even had to let me come to her crib and record. So made the salute to her. I started recording there that summer, you know what I'm saying, writing, getting on the mic, and it was, it was, it was fun. I enjoyed it, you know what I'm saying, and then I was like, you know what I'm saying, we were just having fun. Me and my homies, you know what I'm saying, just, just being in that studio, yo. That was just an experience where it was fun. Not all those that I enjoyed. I enjoyed it so much that I was like, bro, this is what I, I, I had. That's what I wanted to do. I found out what I wanted to do in life, and that was it. I wanted to, I wanted to be on that microphone and be a rapper, yo. I went to college, you know what I'm saying, and, School was more like get my education for my mom more than for myself. That's the truth. But that's how they just tell you gotta get your education, you gotta get your education, you gotta get your education. But in, in my mind, I'm like, bro, I, I want to rap, bro. I want, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do it. So I did two years in care, man, and I and I stopped because I knew music was what I wanted to do. I love. I love hearing the music was what I wanted to do. I found out what I wanted to do. I said, man, you know what? I'm gonna bust my ass at it. I um, dropped out of school. 
I was out of school, try to figure out a way, you know what I'm saying, where I was going to make music, you know what I'm saying, figure out how to do it, man. By myself. That year I left school, that same year when my best friend was killed in a car accident. R.I.P. to D.T. He killed in a car accident. He went by play, I went by kids. That was my little brother. Car accident, you know what I'm saying? Had me all messed up. So here I am out of school. I lost my partner. You know what I'm saying? I don't really know what's going on, how I'm gonna do it. So um, I was trying to figure my way out. I said, alright. I need to try and figure out how I'm gonna get her into a studio. So I Google found this producer. His name was Greg Quarter, they call him G Dot. He was in Biloxi. Gulfport, Mississippi. Over him, we met over him, you know what I'm saying? Started rapping off instrumentals, you know what I'm saying? Figured I'd probably put this tape together. Something like how the Wayne did when he did the drought or whatever. He was just killing instrumentals. So I figured I'd do something like that. So I got with him. I was recording with him. I used to drive all the way to Gulfport. The loop step. Long drive. So driving to go for it probably it's more than an hour. Close to like an hour and a half, maybe. It's a hell of a drive. I was working at Popeye Chicken. DT brother had actually got me that job. That was a big move. I was working at Popeye Chicken and Louis there. I wasn't really making no cash. Hitting the road. Trying to record. I go to go for it. I record with Greg Porter and um, G Dot. I go and record with him. And what I find out is, I go and record with him. And then um, I set up like a studio time to go to. And I get like halfway there. Or like, you know what I'm saying? To the point where, you know what I'm saying? I'm supposed to go for it. And he'll call me and he'll counsel on me. Like, yo, we can't get the studio today. Or something came up. I put all my gas going up. You know what I'm saying? Already ain't got no money. Ain't nobody else just finna pour got no cash for somebody who just got a rap dream. Everybody got rap dream. You gotta invest. You ain't got no people to invest in. You gotta invest in yourself. All the way up, man. Drive all the way up. Yeah, cancel on me. I got tired of that. Lo and behold, I ain't wanna do that no more. I couldn't rock with him like that. No, sir. Killing me. Burning a hole in my pocket. And I'm busting my ass at Popeye Chicken. Now, how that kitchen? So, so, by that time, I think I had got it. Um, Job at the yard. Shout out to Mr. Um, Washington, Nathan Washington, man. That man had put me on at, at, at Ingles. It was a blessing. I was doing interviews trying to get on there too. They never would hire me. Mr. Washington came over by the crib, so they were going to be hiring for the apprentice. Finally got in the door. I said, Oh, it's about to be a ball game. True story. Mr. Washington put me on. Got that job in Ingles. I said, man, I gotta find another another place to record. Google, another studio close to me. I be damned, I found Ron G in Mobile. A studio called Blue Magic. Lord have mercy, was that a blessing? I went and recorded with G. I had this track I had wrote. Um they called Mississippi Fly. What we called it. My first track I recorded with. Him. Recorded Mississippi Fly. I recorded it, man. Hey, bro, I'm going fast. I'm going. Recorded it with him. When I finished recording, he started like putting his light mix on it. The dopest thing I ever heard. I was like, this dude is phenomenal. After Ron G did that, I took the little CD he burnt for me. I started playing to everybody. They was like, man, you need, to, you need to work with him, man. You need to, I like, hell to the fuck, yeah. So I have to say, man, out of all the things that I had learned, once I got with G, I recorded with G for, I don't even know. I dropped all my tapes with G. 
He did every everything I was recording that I put out. Ron G had touched everything. And not only was he such a dope producer, he was a dope person, man. G, he was just, he was just like a genuine, he was just a genuinely good person. He was just, he and mine helped me. He knew everything, man. He showed me how to, how I needed to like, market myself what I need to do, gave me ideas, ideas for like videos. He showed me as far as like, you know what I'm saying, as far as like going the route, on how to get paid with your music, how to copyright your music, how to publish yourself. G did, he told me all of that. He was spilling, he gave me all the game, yo. Know? And in that time, he had introduced me to a producer, Grammy nominated. Now, but before that, it was a guy named Matt Tasty. He's actually the engineer for Lil Baby. G had set me up with him to record a song, which I had tried to push in my first single, Running Out of Time. Matt had engineered that, that on session with me. I don't know how G did it. I don't know where he was that day, but I had to record with Matt. Had a great time with Matt. I ended up shooting that video to Running Out of Time. So salute to Matt Tassi too. But G, out of all the people that I worked with, man, like I said, I started with Vic. You know what I'm saying? And then I had to move on. Vic them. They didn't charge me a dime. They, they laid the foundation, man. I learned how to record, how to stack new ad-libs. And I went to Greg Porter. That didn't work out how I wanted to. Cool. This is how, you know what I'm saying? How life worked. And I ran into G. And G, man, I promise you, that was the, working with him was the best. I learned the most working with G out of anything, man. And he and mine working. I used to go to the studio and talk about, man, I do late night sessions like eight hours in the studio. Just rapping my ass off. Cause all she had to do press some buttons. And I'm talking about, bruh, amazing. Amazing. Shout out to my boy, Ron G, man. If anybody on the coast or anybody trying to come up, man, if you're close around the area from off that coast, I'm telling you, go work with Ron G. Go work with that man. Motivated me, man. He made me go to open mics, man. And all in Mobile, yo. All in Mobile. Run mob, everything, man. Introduced me to DJs, other producers, and ours. I had a label reach out to me, act like they wanted to sign me, which didn't go the way I wanted it to. They worked with me on my first video out of New Orleans, all because of G. How to network. All because of Ron G. Any artist trying to come up, man, I, I, if I was you, man, I'm telling you, go work with that guy, man. You're going to learn a lot from that man. And he's just genuinely a good person, yo. He introduced me to DJ October. And his host, Run Mob, which they still do. If you don't go to Run Mob, you need to go to Run Mob, man. All independent artists may be coming up off that post. Invest in yourself. Go to Run Mob, man. Do them open mics, man. Cause you never know who in the building. You never know who you might meet. Melt Link with October, man. He hosts my first tape, True Story, all original music. G, exactly produced everything. Dropped that tape in the same year. He came back. I invested in my merch too. The only person you know what I'm saying investing in with me was my mother, yo. T-shirts, snapbacks, everything, posters, all that. I hit the road. I come to Atlanta. Hit that motherfucking mega bus. Hit the road. Coming to Atlanta by myself. By myself. Hung up posters, everything by myself. Nobody. Nobody wanted to run with me. Nobody. By myself. There was there was one click though when I promoted it back home. Red Rand and his squad. Team Finesse Six was what they went by at first. The group of them salute to those little bros, cause they did. No guy had their tapes, you know what I'm saying? And they were pushing and promoting heavy. So salute to them. Cause they did show mad love. I had tapes. I put them in Squirt Barbershop. He didn't charge me a coin to put them there. My poster Squirt didn't charge me a dime to put them there right out the barbershop. By myself, though. Dropped my first tape with October. Oh, Crump Monster. 
92, 92.9, that 3 BLS played my first song. It was called One Day. They played on the radio. Nick and Knight played it for like nine months straight. Can't forget them. They played my first song. My own state wouldn't even play me. My own state wouldn't even play my record. Mobile, Alabama was the only, they were the only one playing my music. Alabama. My own state wouldn't even play my music. I go to radio stations by myself. All the way to Jackson, Hattiesburg, none of them. None of them, the coast. Mississippi 228 wouldn't even play me, yo. None of them. I, just, I hit the radio station all the time by myself trying to get it on the radio. None of them. Punk Monster showed me mad love, man. Mad love. And I grew up off the Punk Monster, man. Everybody on that coast know um, Nick at Night, bruh. Showed me love. Spent my first record, yo, on the radio. As a matter of fact, he played two of them. He had two turned up and he had one day on the air. First DJ to put me on the air. DJ Nick at Night. Alabama showed me way more love than my own state, yo. And during all of this time, people were like, man, you need to go to Atlanta. Man, you need to move to Atlanta. I thought it was crazy because I was like, man, I, I ain't going to be making no money. It would be like backwards if I do that. I like the shipyard, support me, I make good money at the yard, support my musical risk. If nobody else wanted to invest in me, I doing it myself. I'm like, bro, that'd be crazy, bro. So I travel back and forth, like every so often. Like every other weekend, I go to Atlanta. Try to network with people, meet with people by myself, bro. Nobody running it with me. Nobody. Then I end up going to South by South. South by Southwest. I think that, yo, in Houston. In Houston, by myself. Went the overnight. Love in the car. Handing out tapes. I got the trunk. Pushing it. Pushing it. Second tape from the drop. Within the same year. DJ October again. So let's do it again. Family Matters. That was the name of the second one. No. Rolling Stone was the name of the second one. I'm sorry. Had to fly to California. My brother was there, though. Flew out to California promoting the same way. By myself. All the way out there in LA. All the way out there in Hollywood. Inglewood. Beverly Hills. Shout out to Emmanuel, cause he showed me around in California too. Cause around the time of on the BT Awards. I'm standing right out front of the Staples Center. Hand and I take it. By myself. Nobody. Ain't nobody running with the kid. Through this journey, what I'm learning, man, is the same thing that artists went through. They say the same story, man. You have to go through this. I said, all right, if that's true, then I'm going to go through it. And I'm seeing it. So I should see the result at the end, at the um, the light at the tunnel. I should see this. I should see this. Which, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes, you know, you may feel like you want to quit. But you can't give up. You can't tap out, because that's what they say, you know what I'm saying, you can't do. So I'm grinding, I've been LA. You know what I'm saying, trying my best, networking, going through the process. You know what I'm saying, take drop. Dropped all these on spin really, yo, by myself. Don't check. So if you haven't saw any of that, like you ain't, haven't heard any of my music, man. What I'm saying is, man, I know my shit ain't whack, bruh. Can't possibly be. And if it is, then I'm gonna be one of the wackest rappers to make it, cause I'm not stopping, bruh. That's bullshit that you want to support your boy from Mississippi? Oh, come on, bruh. Somebody gotta put on, bruh. What? Ain't none of y'all putting on. That's all right, I will. If I have to put on alone. If I have to put on alone. Them big facts, baby. Second tape drop. Running it. Family Matter. DJ October, man. I'm loving the tape, bro. I love the way we do things, you know what I'm saying? Beautiful tape. And my covers, I always use an old photo, man. And Rico Knight did all of my graphics. Ron G introduced me to him. Rico Knight, man, worked with Bobby Valentino, man. He a dope graphic 
graphic design, bro. A graphic designer, bro. But that's not the only thing you do. You have to check him out too. Rico Knight, bro. Show me mad love, bro. He do all. He did all my graphics for my takes, yo. All of them. Third take, same yo. Damn, it matters. Had to drop that one. That's the last tape I dropped with DJ Otto. When I dropped Family Matters, that was three tapes I had dropped. All of this is free music. I ain't put out nothing to make money off of. Nothing. Man, nothing to make money off of. They made it cool. And that didn't bother me because my strategy was put the content out there to get your name out there just to get something going. The money gonna come. That was my strategy. Because I had the money to invest in myself. But I wasn't making any revenue. This whole time wasn't making any revenue. Still working with G. Executive produced all three of my takes. DJ October had hosted all three. Still working at the yard, grinding, getting it. I said to myself, man, I said, man, I can't, I can't keep going back and forth. I would mean keeping in Atlanta, but you don't just run into somebody and say, you know what? I'm finna invest my money in this guy. Sometimes it may work like that, but most of the time it doesn't. You have to build a relationship with a person. They have to figure out, you know what I'm saying? This man, what, what does this man do? Is he really doing this? You know what I'm saying? What is his grind like? Is his work ethic? I had a job ever since, you know what I'm saying? I was 14 years old getting a check, yo. I worked at Wayne Lee's grocery store at 14. The Lee. Getting it. The youngest one in that grocery store. Produce. Working. Been working since I was 14, yo. Busting my ass. It's my work ethic, yo. Too much heart. It's my work ethic. But people don't see that because I believe the game is so light. Saturated. But we're not going to get off into that. This is what we're going to say. I had a choice. It was either try and stay in Mississippi and make it what you can do. But when I came to Atlanta, it was like every day and night there was something to do with dealing with music in the entertainment industry in order to meet somebody and network. Mississippi is not like that. Every day or every night in Atlanta is some way to network or network or meet somebody. Strip clubs, clubs, DJs, promoters, in everywhere. They always have an open mic. Always have an open mic. Every night. Every night somewhere in Atlanta. I said, fuck it, I gotta move. Made my mind up the mood. I told, I told my boss lady, she didn't believe that kid ain't going on. So she said, I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm going to Atlanta. She came up here, I do job interviews. Job interviews, come up here, trying to find me an apartment. On that road, man, sleeping in my car. Hungry for, hungry for success. The ones who really, really close to me, man, they know. They know what I went through and what I'm going through. They know. A lot of people just see it on the outside because you know what I'm saying? I cut a lot of people off because I was just focused, just that determined. It wasn't no just hanging out, chilling, no, 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 none of that. I told her I out my Chevy just because, you know what I'm saying, working two jobs, then trying to go to a, trying to promote and network in Mississippi. Fell asleep behind the wheel. Told her my car right when I got on at the shipyard. Grinding. I worked at the yard for like almost four years. Almost four, I believe. Four or three. Something like that. I said, man, I gotta go. As a man. As a man who worked there at the yard with his name was Mr. Major. He play instruments, man, man, can sing, man, love the right man, old head. Cooler than a fan. Cooler than a fan. You hear the stories he used to tell me, man. 
And it just, you know what I'm saying, open my eyes and think that I need to take a chance while I can right now. So that way, you know what I'm saying, I won't regret it in life later. I say, even if I didn't make it, I can say, you know what? I tried. I took a chance. I don't want nobody to be able to take that from me. I be like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I shot it. Air ball, but it's cool, though. I shot it, though. When the rock came to me, I ain't passed up the shot. So I can always say that. But I ain't playing no air ball, you feel what I'm saying? I had to hit the backboard or something. Yeah, dig it. Might be off the brick, but you know what I'm saying? I said, fuck it, man. Pat my shit up. I got this um interview. I was hollering at my boy Hand. Hand and on horn. I was telling her, like, yo, I got an interview, you know what I'm saying? It's like, well, you ain't gonna get the job if you don't go to it. So you right. Like, man, I just didn't want to travel all the way up here to do an interview and not get the job, yo. That was like crazy to me. I traveled up here, had like three interviews lined up. One on wanted me to stay and do another interview. Yeah, that was the first one. I almost accepted that job, but I didn't, I didn't really like it. Miss Sheila, she had told me, she like, don't go for that one. And I had got that one that I told them hand I'm about. And I had another one that same day. Came up here, did an interview. This man said he was gonna hire my company. I was so happy. The thing just turned. Felt like, it felt like a turn. Yeah, I think it's been shaking so much. Anyway. Everybody here yeah, know the struggle. Yeah, I love this song. Know where I'm from, bro. Side, for real though. True story. Got the job. I had to train and miss it. They paid for. Fly out though. I think I flew out though. Yo, flew out though. Baby, me fly to the train. Then on my way back, I had to start to work in Atlanta, Georgia. Whole time I was doing my interview, I was on signing the lease to my apartment, getting the keys to my apartment. I went up there to train two weeks. I called my folks. I told them, I was like, yo. You know what I'm saying? I got this apartment lined up. I come on, bring my stuff. On my way coming back from Michigan, I met him in Atlanta. Bring my stuff in in Atlanta. That was two years ago. Got to Atlanta. Hit the ground running. I went to all the motherfucking strip clubs. I linked up with all the DJs I could possibly link up with. I was trying to figure out what's this, what's that. Try to, hey. What I need to do, how I need to do what. All these DJs were giving me game on what I need to do, how I need to do it. DJs, you know what I'm saying? Some of them charge you, they gotta make a living too, which I understand. I ain't disrespect, you know what I'm saying? No disrespect. Anyway, hit the ground running. Hit the ground running. And what was crazy was I hit these open mics. I hit these open mics in my work. I go to work, man. Crazy job, bro. Just like the yard. Still told booze I come on dirty and motherfucker. Old rug and shit. But I was doing open mics in them still told booze on Magic City stage, bro. By myself, bro. Hey, man, Performing on that stage and still told booze. Dirty than a motherfucker, bro. Trying to get it, bro. I know the strippers and them girls looking at me like I crazy than a motherfucker. I ain't give a fuck. I'm grinding. It is what it is, bro. You gotta start somewhere. By myself. Other niggas on the iced out chains and shit. You know what I'm saying? Dripping. I ain't doing nothing but dripping dirt. Mud. Stanging. Now, what the fuck is wrong with this dude? You gotta get it. I went to Onyx. I met this DJ named DJ T Rex, man. DJ T Rex, man. I had three tracks. He's been around back to back to back. He said, man, you need to run this one. He told me to go to a club called Club Wax. I let a DJ named Filthy. He said, go there, man. You know what I'm saying? Tell him I sent you Blase Blase. 
all that. It's going right over there. They check me at the dude, dude, pat me down. I said, bro, I'm here to see you, you know what I'm saying? Blase, blase. The guy, he followed me. He escorted me to the club. All that 50, I gave him a track. Told him I was trying to do it. Introduced myself to him. Shout out to DJ T-Rex, man, because he, he worked with a lot of artists, man, and he so mad love, bro. DJ, I met a lot of DJs. DJs I met in Magic City. I met several DJs at Magic City. DJ Outlaw. Met him. He was giving me free game. He was telling me what I need to do, how I need to do it. You know what I'm saying? As far as tipping the strippers as well, the dancers. You get them on your side, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? You want to network with them, you want to tip them. You want to throw money behind your song. You can't have the money to invest. Kind of hard to do. So a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? You want to have you a team. Definitely. Me, my team, nowhere to be found. But that's cool, though. Sometimes it be like that. Everybody's journey is different. Mine just happened to be up on me because a lot of people don't believe. It's cool. You just said this up, man. By that time, bro, when you take off the jet, gonna be in the sky. I'm gonna be gone. That's gonna be it. Can't help you. I'm gonna try and tell people to rock with me. He's an outlaw. I gave him a track. It was just a rough mix. Like, I believe you got you one with this one. There's another DJ in the booth that was there as well, man. DJ Boot. All these DJs, whatever man that I met, I think there was another DJ, his name was um, Ashton, if I'm not mistaken. It's a lot of DJs, you know what I'm saying, that I haven't met in LA. It's a lot of them, but it's a lot of them that I met, though. And I was just being myself, man. People who know me, man, know that I'm a genius. Like, I'm just a good person at heart, bro. I don't mean nobody no harm, bro. I'm just trying to make a bro. I here like the next man. But I ain't out here doing nobody dirty, doing nobody bad. That's why I believe in karma, man. DJ Boo, you know what I'm saying? They were telling me what I need to do. They were just giving me game. They were like, look, you might want to go run and run and meet all these DJs. Go to this club, go to that club, hit this club. That's what I did. I went to that club, went to this club, went to that club. Like the best time to holler at them is during the day shift, you know what I'm saying? Night shift, they working. You know what I'm saying? You want to get your record spent? Who don't want to get their record spent? Every artist in Atlanta trying to make it. I hit him up on, on, on the daytime. I work my ass, I work my ass. Like, man, I gotta get here before this time. I need to go to this club. Every day I go to another strip club. And they go with the DJ, be like, yo, my name Kid, Blase Blase, got this track. He'll tell me what I need to do, you know what I'm saying? I tell him, I say, DJ, say, hit you up in the day shift, Blase Blase. Trying to get in your rotation. Some DJs fuck with you, some of them don't. Me, when disrespect the DJ, why? One reason, one reason only. They are the key for the artist. Who else gonna play your damn music? You can't just walk in the club and just be playing your music. You gotta work with the DJ. The DJ is the key. So I support all the DJs. I know they have to put, they don't want to be one to put up with artists all the time. Every art, I know artists coming there to a DJ. I know emails, DMs, they getting that 24 7 around the clock. And I know that could be frustrating and tiring. I know that can be frustrating and tiring. Nobody want to deal with that. And then, you know what I'm saying? If your music ain't mixed, that's the sound good as far as quality. It come up that sound like trash. It's not that, you know what I'm saying? That's just how they're they going to keep it all the way. The DJ in Atlanta, well, I'm pretty sure, you know what I'm saying? DJs probably around the world, period. They're going to keep it all the way funky with you, bro. It sound like shit. Don't take that as, you know what I'm saying, disrespect. Honestly, help me, man. You don't want your music to be, if you're taking it serious, you don't want your music to be out there sound like trash. I already know, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know that myself. I had to go through this process to learn. Do it cost to get your stuff mixed and mastered? Yes. Will it help you in the long run? Yes. You need to do that. These are key things that you need to do. You don't want to have a hot song. That radio ain't going to play it. Trust me, I know. Hot 1079 untold me. Your music sound like trash. It's not. It's terrible. Sound like garbage. Get it mixed and mastered. Cool. Who I need to take it to? That's just let me know. Cause I'm serious about my craft, so I'm gonna invest the money in it to get it done. I'm just telling you this 
for any artist trying to make it. These are the things that you're gonna have to do. These are the steps you're gonna have to take. One thing that I found in Atlanta, man, when I met these DJs, there's a, there's a, they were doing this thing, it's a coalition of DJs. Best thing I could've ever went to. When I first went to it, it was crazy. It was an outcast studio. Beautiful number of DJs. Zaytoven was in, I met Zaytoven enough. Everybody done been enough. All like major, major artists come through there, major producers, you know what I'm saying? DJs, you never know who gonna be in the building. Artists get on there, they showcase their talents for DJs. DJ give them feedback, you know what I'm saying, on what they what they think about uh about the performance or or you know what I'm saying, which records you know they think that that the artist should run with. And these are or or people, you know, very knowledgeable people. People who don't work with, you know what I'm saying, successful successful artists or you know what I'm saying, successful producers or you know what I'm saying? Keep people in the game right now that they don't work with. And these are DJs who've been doing it for years. They done broke plenty records. Plenty, many records. Right where I wanted to be. I was in the mix of it all. Just watching, learning, listening. Listening is the key thing. When somebody trying to tell you something, listen. Listen. And that's all I've been doing. Like a sponge, just been trying to soak it all in. New Music Monday. Shout out to all those DJs in the coalition, man. Because they there for a reason to help artists, and I was there to be helped. And I'll link with all these DJs because I know that they're going to be essentials for me in order to make it. And I'm going to always remember the people, you know what I'm saying, that, that took the time to help me, you know what I'm saying, to get where I need to be. Those DJs are, are essential, yo. I listen to them, I network with them, I tell them what I need to do, you know what I'm saying? They tell me what I need to do. I said I tell them what they need to do. They would, they would help me, yo. Ever since I've been in Atlanta, I licked up with them, grinding with them, with DJs, man. The DJ in Magic City, DJ Boo, he had um, introduced me to another DJ, his name was Shawty Rock. I ran with Shotty Rock, man. Ran with Shotty Rock. He'd spin my record, spin my record, spin my record. In the clubs, all the clubs he go to, man. It'd be so hard pulling up because I work in two jobs and then I'm grinding. I couldn't even get no sleep. Working two jobs, trying to do the 365 challenge, rapping every goddamn day. The grind, no time for sleep, yo. Then had to go to these clubs. Oh, man. This, oh, man. He was running and spinning my track, spinning my track. If the track wasn't mixing and mastering, he told me I needed to do that. Took the time out, they told me these, this track, this birthday twerk track, they was like, man, I think you might have you one. You need to invest in it, you know what I'm saying? Get your campaign behind it, get the song mixed and mastered, the clean version, shoot the video, you know what I'm saying? Put the bag behind it, that's all they kept saying. Put the bag behind it, put the bag behind it, put the bag behind it. That's what all DJs were saying. You gotta put the bag behind the record. We have a team. It's hard to beat a team, but I'm a one-man army over here. Not unless it come to Sammy, though. You know what I'm saying? She's so mad. Love. Jazz, what is she doing? I've been running out of time. But I do this all the time. No sleep. No, no, no. My birthday turk, mix and master. Shout out to Snotty, the engineer who did it. I got a lot of tracks I don't record it. This ain't put out. It's a process, man. You got to, got to go into stuff and do it. I'm not telling you I know exactly what to do. I'm telling you that I'm going to find out exactly what I have to do. I can let you know. But what I do know is the things that I have done already, the mistakes that I made, and the things that I have done that help, I'm letting you know now. So you won't have to go the route that I had to take as far as you know what I'm saying, the money and to invest. Don't don't throw away your money. Invest your money in the right way. That's how my mindset was like, look, 
I have the money, I don't want to be wasting my money on doing something that I don't need to do. When there's, you know what I'm saying, I can do what I need to do with the money to actually help. Because you're going you gonna to meet people, you know what I'm saying, who ain't going to you going to waste your time, just want to get over on you. You're going to meet those kind of people, but you are going to meet some great people, you know what I'm saying, people you don't mind helping and going out there way for you. That's the beauty of it. It's an ugly business, they say. I'm just not trying to get hit with the ugliest. You feel me? I'm just trying to do the right thing as far as, you know what I'm saying, for myself. But I'm not just trying to be just an artist. Run my label, Grow Side Entertainment, CEO right here. There's a lot of things that I want to do as far as, like, helping young artists who had a dream like I had, you know what I'm saying? To show them the right way in order how to do things. We finna cross the line. Like, oh, we about to be out of Georgia, we about to be in Alabama. And that's where I am right now, pushing this single. Finally got it uploaded online, y'all need to check it out. I'm finally getting content, you know what I'm saying, to put on my YouTube. It takes time for these things. I promise you, man, I thought I was man when I was on rally, but I feel blow. Man, that was dang near six years ago with my first song on, like, on the radio, yo. Six, seven, eight, maybe. Somewhere around there. Running, 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 running run, run, out of time. Welcome to Sweet Home Alabama. Oh, they everywhere. I'm going to say. Everywhere. It's a learning process. I'm enjoying it. You see all these dogs on text, man. I just wanted to get y'all to run down. I got to where I'm at now. There'll be more vlogs on stories on my life, you know what I'm saying, to let y'all know exactly what it is and how it is. I just wanted y'all to know what's popping, what's really good right now. It's your boy Kid, man. We on our way home, man. I just want to hit y'all with that, man. If you ever get the chance, man, if you watch this whole video, which is like 40 something minutes long, I appreciate it. That means, you know what I'm saying, you tuned in with me. What I want you to do for me is to rock with me. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe. Share my content. Let people know about the kid from Mississippi. But God promise you, when the jet is in the sky, that is it. Hey man. Salute to Mississippi. Salute to Mississippi. Shout out to DJ Ato. Yes, yeah, sir. Hey y'all be the best, man. Oh. My alarm is set for two, but I wake up around three. Four o'clock in the morning, heading south 63. Today, y'all. Y'all be blessed.